like literally I left off with you in a class in grad school. So like, <laughs> give me the longer version of what, like where I leave off with you in grad school in like 2010 to you being in Alaska, like now shopping for properties, you know, in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, so let's see um, the long version here. Hopefully this doesn't put you to sleep. So Eli, I remember sitting in class with you back probably, what, 2009, 2010? Yeah. I, maybe? Okay. Yeah, I graduated in 10, so it'd be probably yeah. 09, 09, so 10. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that I, under, I graduated with my undergrad from Duquesne 2010. Um, stayed around Pittsburgh for the next year or so, really. I got a job at an advertising agency where we did a lot of, you know, I would say the more traditional um, media, <laughs> traditional advertising. I mean, I age myself, but if you remember, that's when um, businesses were just starting to get on Twitter. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so social media marketing was just becoming a thing. Uh, so I was there for about a year or so. Uh, then I decided that going to grad school probably made sense. And I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to get more into business. Somebody told me a while ago that if you don't know if you want to go south or east, start going southeast. And along the way, you'll kind of figure it out. So that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> um, was, I don't want to say I was directionally lost, but I, I had a, an area where I thought I wanted to go. So I applied to business schools and I got in at DePaul University. So at the time, I decided to also apply to Leo Burnett, which is a much bigger uh, advertising agency for me, um, and moved into the shopper marketing area. So really focused on how do you reach that customer? How do you reach that shopper along their path to purchase, whether that was in store or whether that was online, um, on your website, on, again, Amazon.com when, when the e-commerce world was starting to grow, right? Um, so I did, this is the probably the toughest part for me, honestly, which was a two and a half year degree at night. So I work from like 7.30 in the morning till 5 p.m., leave at five, go right to class from six to 9 p.m. And then um, it was exhausting. <laughs> yeah, hey, I did it, I did it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we survived somehow, <laughs> uh, stronger for it, right? Right. Uh, uh, and then I, I decided that while I loved advertising, while I loved marketing, I also wanted to put more of that business degree to, to use. So. I moved into the professional services world uh, where I started focusing more on, on biz dev and also marketing um, more so at a holistic level. So better understanding an entire industry um, and then being able to help uh, the leads at our, our firm at that time really go to market um, and essentially sell a lot more work. Uh, from there, I thought, well, hey, <laughs> I also focus on entrepreneurship with my uh, second degree. So what would I like to do? And that's where I thought, hey, photography is something that I loved at the time. Um, it was more about just getting started doing something, right? I think a lot of times for me personally, I get these ideas in my head and then I just don't do something, right? It's in action. Um, oftentimes because I get my own way, I just make excuse up you know excuses up whatever it looks like um, right. so I thought you know what? I'm just gonna I'm a point in time in my life right now I'm just gonna try to take that fun leap and see what I can do and so with that I moved down to St. Pete Florida and that's where I um, focused on photography 100% uh, I learned things fairly quickly um, but I did it because I also had to right so I wanted to start bringing in revenue as soon as I could um, it was about what one to two years of, of focusing on it and building up the relationships, not only with your clientele, or I should say my clientele, um, yeah. <laughs> but then also, you know, from a B2B standpoint, getting a website up and running, all of that, um, which, you know, was, was fun. There's also the, the not so much fun piece, which is the taxes, it's the operations, it's, um, you know, the, the paperwork and stuff that I didn't find fun and exciting, but, uh, you know, you have to learn on your feet for a lot of it. Uh, to your point, you can watch a lot of YouTube videos and find out a lot of information but at the same time it's also one thing to watch somebody else do it and another thing to actually be held responsible to do it um so that being said this entire time i was coming up to a small town in in alaska called petersburg petersburg is known for more commercial fishing right it's a town that has pretty much one street with one grocery store one bar <laughs> what um 
what was taking you there? What, how, how were you, what's the connection? Yeah, that's a missing piece, isn't it? Um, so my husband is a big fisherman. Uh, he started probably when he was like 10 years old coming up to Alaska every every summer. And so he built this connection and this rapport with one of the lodge owners up in Petersburg. So every summer he would take me up here and we would go self-guided fishing. So that's essentially where you have you, essentially you know, your own boat. You have a GPS and you go fishing which yeah. sounds kind of crazy to an extent and so probably somewhat simplistic to some folks who might be listening um but this idea of go make it happen you have a week go figure out how to how to catch a halibut right so right. again it's a little bit like oh crap how do you do this let's go to youtube let's figure it out yeah. um but you know it's, it's my third parent youtube yeah <laughs> my third parent. yeah <laughs> that's a good way to put it uh it's your fun aunt right yeah um, <laughs> So we kept coming up here. And, and one thing that we realized over time was that Petersburg was absolutely phenomenal, such a great place to uh, have fun and really make it um, a, a recreational location. But if you're going to work in a job where you need a reliable internet, um, it may not be the best spot to go, um, as well as there's, I think, one flight in in the morning, one flight out of the town in the afternoon. So if you need to get some- Busy place. place. Yeah, super busy. Real busy. <laughs> you know, the uh, the airport is the size of probably the office that you're in right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty small. Um, you know, so we, we thought, hey, we might need to go somewhere that, that's a little bit more reliable in terms of, uh, you know, getting in and out of the city, internet, et cetera. So that's why we kind of, you know, we started looking at Juno. It's also part of Southeast Alaska. It still had the same vibes. You still have the same fishing. Um, there's still commercial guys, a lot of commercial guys and gals here in Juneau. Um, and so long story short, I guess, um, moved into the Juneau area and we started coming up to Juneau more frequently versus in P Petersburg. So um, from, I forget where I was at. Oh, in Florida, uh, we moved back to PA. Um, and so we bought a house there and then we just continued to coming up here during the, the summers. And after a few years of renting, we thought, hey, why don't we buy here? <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly where we are today. So, yeah, that's, that was a long story for you, Eli. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, that's I asked for it. That's, that's what I wanted. Um, but you asked for, right? yeah, and but that's that's funny that like uh, I, I've now seen this happen twice recently. Like I have yeah. I have some friends who constantly go down to um, New Orleans. Like that, they're just. <laughs> They love the culture. That's just like they're absolute. They, they just love the vibe down there, and yeah. they're they're there all the time. And I I imagine they just had like a place to rent or whatever. Um, and then finally, like at the beginning of the pandemic, like they they just like hit me up and they're like, "Well, we just figured, you know, it's now or never. Like if we're not <laughs> if we're not gonna like enjoy ourselves like in in like the worst part of life, then we're never gonna." <laughs> ourselves they're like we pulled the trigger we bought a place so now they're like co co-residing in pa and and down in uh new orleans i love it i love it so you're gonna go visit them and then visit us up here yeah yeah i'll yeah. do it in that order so it can be the yeah. longest flight ever <laughs> yeah right oh <laughs> 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 no i i absolutely would love to come visit you and yeah. and go out like that would just blow my mind uh to be able to like, I, I, I still just can't imagine uh, that being so readily available to you. Like you, your Instagram literally looks like its own Nat Geo. Like it looks Aww. like its own like national geographic. It's, it's crazy. Um, that is so kind of you. Thank you. Well, I mean, it, it's, <laughs> I, I love people have wildly different outlooks on social media than I do. I I'm very, um, I am very involved with how those algorithms react to me. Like I make sure to <laughs> cater the algorithm to show me things that I want to see. And, and, and none of that, like, especially on my Instagram, none of that is like anything that's going to rile me up it's all inspiring stuff like or or very odd right like i love <laughs> really strange nature things that like that that can be that's i'll repost them like my 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 feed is is weird but like 
I have I have my algorithm in a weird way where your photo, like whatever you post that day, is within the first four photos every morning. So I wake up and I always see like like a whale's, you know, a whale tail coming out of the water or a full breach <laughs> or like this awesome eagle shot or like a bear or something. And I was like, this is a great way to start the morning. Like these shots are so oh, cool. God. And they're like, so like, it just, it does blow my mind that this is something that you kind of not like, obviously you say that like it, not every day is like as jam packed with action as you, you know, as the photos may seem, but the fact that it's even an option on like it's accessible to you daily is blows my mind. Yeah. It's uh, I'm so glad you said that out loud. Like, because it's so easy to just assume that you can get access to things like that. Right. Right. Um, so thank you. And, and it's a good reminder to me as well. Uh, that's why I do like the, the model of, you know, being in Pennsylvania and being in Alaska, because in, in a sense it forces you to always see, the location that you're in through the eyes of a child. And that sometimes can get missed if you're in a spot uh, for too long, right? And not in a bad way, right? You get used to things. It's, it's what you should do. You should adapt as a human being to your location. Um, but I think there is, you know, something to be said about splitting time between locations. And it's also why folks travel, right? Right. Um, oftentimes you see things just differently uh, when you're forced to get out of your comfort zone. So thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome.